Hey everyone, it's Robin from One Paper Street. I made this really fun notebook about a week or two back and I wanted to show you guys because I've really been digging it and it was super easy to make. So I travel a good bit and when I travel I like to have some of my supplies with me so that I can kind of just do a little bit of painting or do a little bit of coloring, uh, just kind of depending on what I'm feeling. And sometimes I'll bring multiple different uh, sets of supplies with me depending on how long I'm going to be gone or where I'm going and sometimes I just want to move around my house and sit in a different place and work and I don't always want to be in my craft room. So I had been wanting to make a notebook like this for a while, I just didn't really know how to go about it. So what I did is I actually bought a notebook. This is a, let's see, this is an eight and a half by six and a half notebook cover so it's probably holding an eight by five and a half sheet of paper but I just bought the notebook and the cover online and then I actually bought some uh, some dividers online um, so these are just like the arc system um, or I'm sure happy planner would have them as well and then I already had these uh, little rings that you can um, put uh, put the notebook on um, but it was pretty easy I found them all on Amazon I'll, I'll link to it uh, so that you guys can um, get something similar if you're interested um, so I'll walk you through the notebook uh, basically all I did was I have some lined paper in the front so that I can um, start uh, designing some different card ideas that I had so this one was a striped um, watercolor background with a stamp sentiment which I actually just completed and I'm going to be posting it soon um, and then this one was just like uh, some blended um, ink blending background with a stamp to kind of make it all pop and a sentiment down below so whatever ideas I'm just thinking I sort of just write them down and then when I run out of paper I can simply just kind of peel it up and pull it away because it's uh, it's got those um, like really easy to move around sheets of paper so so that's been really cool and then um, on the back of this page um, I actually ended up putting different pencil blends on the other on the back side of the paper um, just to kind of start doing that and the lined paper is really for anything that I need it doesn't have to be um, super organized I just like anything I'm feeling I write it down there so I have these little folders so that I can put different things that I'm working on um, I'm working on this rose it was a free class from Kit and Clowder so I'll link to it in the video um, but I really like uh, just kind of having different little projects to work on sometimes I get really overwhelmed by the really large notebooks uh, the really large drawing books and so I just really wanted something small to work on so I do have uh, each notebook section kind of labeled. Um, so this is Strath Strathmore sketch paper, um, 60 pound, and then I sort of write what I wanted to use it for and like what it's good for and what the tooth surface is. So, um, so that's been really helpful because I have lots of different types of paper in here, uh, just depending on what I'm working on. And so I don't have any projects in here right now. Um, but this is just uh, drawing paper. So I will be stamping images on here uh, and probably coloring them in with colored pencils. Um, next, I have, um, I do, do not know how to pronounce this name, uh, Bin, Bin Fog um, drawing paper. This is 70 pound. It's got a little bit of texture. Um, it's for dry media, so pens and pencils. Um, and I do have a stamp back here. So this is a stamp from the stamp market. Um, and I am going to be coloring this with colored pencils. And I wanted to, when I'm done, I'm going to trim it out and put it on a card. Um, so that is uh, one of the designs that I have on here. And then I have some Nina Classic Crest Solar White. So of course this is for, um, this is for Copics uh, and other dry media. It's very smooth finish, 80 pound. Uh, and a couple of projects that I have on this. So I have these little uh, these little lettuce friends that I started to color in. Um, now, instead of coloring it on the front of the paper, I've been coloring it on the last piece of paper. So um, 
because Copics go through, Copics bleed through, I didn't want it to bleed on my um, on my marker. So I'm actually going to be turning this into uh, a couple of greeting cards for my friends. Uh, since we're all in quarantine, uh, I wanted to cheer them up a little bit, so I'm going to um, make this. And this is a waffle flower stamp um, called uh, Let Us Be Friends. Get it? Let Us? <laughs> Um, I think I have the stamp here, actually, I can show you. So this was that, um, and that's going to be super cute. I'm really excited about that. Um, and then you kind of flip over. So this is Canson XL um, Mixed Media. So this is where you start to get into some watercolor mediums. Um, so this is good for acrylic, watercolor, pen, and pencil. I will probably either use it for pencil or or watercolor. I don't have a lot of acrylic paint, so I probably won't use it too much for that. And I haven't done anything with it yet, so this paper is still empty. Um, and then next I have the Canson Art Series, um, 138 pound. Uh, so again, dry and wet medium. Um, the front is a medium texture, and the back of this paper is a smooth texture. So again, if I want to flip it around, I can always just peel the piece of paper off and flip it around if I need to. So that's really nice. And then same thing with the watercolor paper. I will work off of the plastic surface. So I'll probably work off the back um, just to make sure that I don't um, contaminate any of the other papers. Um, and then lastly, this is the Canson XL 140 pounds. So this one's really thick. So I only have a couple pages um, because I actually uh, got some scrap pages from a uh, watercolor painting class that I got and I haven't purchased any more yet because I haven't used this up. So um, this is the last one that I have, but this one is also really good for watercolor. And I wrote not hand lettering because the paper is too thick. It'll just, it'll soak up the um, the water and then or the ink and then it'll kind of disperse it so it'll make it look like it's bleeding a little bit so I'm not using it for that uh, and then I have one final folder that I can um, put any projects that I'm working on in um, so that is it for this um, and then you have the front of the notebook again and kind of where we left off but um, I have a hole puncher that looks like this uh, that I just got from Staples, I think it was. And so I just um, I just went through and I just hole punched all the pieces of paper to get it in there. And to trim it up to the size I wanted, I just put it in a um, in a paper trimmer and trimmed it up to the right size. So that's it. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If I wanted to get a little fancier, I could use a label in the future. But yeah, I hope you liked it. Uh, take care, and uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. You can contact me at www.onepaperstreet.com, or you can shoot me a DM on um, Instagram. Um, I'm also on YouTube and Facebook. So um, all of the stuff that I just showed you will be linked in the video, and I hope you guys all have a really, really great day. Thanks. Bye.